the last video, we learned about the titration of a strong acid and a strong base that always result a pH of 7 at the equivalent point. But in this case, we are going to look at another type of titration where we have a weak acid titrate with a strong base. And this can be applied to a weak base titrate with a strong acid, okay? And the method to solve the pH of this type of titration is the same, where you have a weak acid titrate with a strong base or a weak base titrate with a strong acid. It's just, it's flipped other way around. Well, first of all, we have to realize that the pH of 7 is no longer there. We don't really know what is it anymore. But we know for sure that is that at this half equivalent point, we know that the moles of plus is equal to the moles of OH minus. What does that really mean? That is the number of moles of base used to titrate or neutralize all the acid is equal to the number of moles of the acid itself, which in this case is HA. But most importantly, this is also equal to the number of moles of the conjugate base that's being made, because this is all neutralized, okay, by the strong base right there. So that equal to the number of moles of the conjugate base as well. So if that's the case, we can solve for the concentration of either the conjugate base or the moles of the acid. So keep that in mind, okay. And one of the most challenging part of titration is, is that looking at the graph and we had to figure out how to solve for pH at different locations on the graph. For example, if I draw this line all the way over here at the very beginning, this is the initial concentration of the acid right there, right? So what does that mean, the initial concentration? Well, at this initial point, the reaction has not occurred yet because we didn't add any base to it. And to get the pH at the initial point, right, we have to use the Ka. Because this basically the dissociation of the acid. Where after we reacted with a base, either strong or weak base in this case, because this is a titration of an acid, this zone right here is considered as the buffer zone. And when it comes to buffer, what can we use? We can use the henderson hasselbalch equation. So this is can be used by the henderson hasselbalch equation, abbreviated by HB. And pH is equal to pKa plus log of the acid on the bottom and the conjugate base on top, okay? And of course, if we have the half equivalent point, that's even easier pH is equal to the negative log of Ka, which is the letter P. That letter P right there is equal to the negative log, okay? We know that all the acid has been neutralized. But now let's go back and solve our very first problem together. What is the initial concentration of the acid from this particular problem? So a student titrate a 100 milliliter sample of H2CO3. This is formic acid right there. A weak acid with a standardized one molarity of NOH, and it requires 40 milliliter to reach the equivalent point. At this point, the solution turned light pink. That's how we know it reached the equivalent point. And the pH is 8.66. The Ka for this H2CO3 or formic acid is, is 1.7 times 10 to negative 4. So this is formic acid right there. So the first question is, what is the initial concentration of the acid? We know that at the equivalent point, the moles of base is equal to the moles of acid as well. How, and how much of the base do we need to reach that equivalent point? It is 40 milliliter. So we have 40 milliliter, and that could be interpreted in terms of 0.04 liter. Okay? So let's do this problem. So we have 0.04 liter of the base times the molarity of this which is 1.0, so we have 1.0 mole of NaOH over 1 liter of NaOH solution. And that cancels each other out, okay? And this is supposed to be NaOH right there. And give us the number of moles of 
NOH, which is also equal to the number of moles of the acid as well. So in this case, we have point. In this case, we have 0 0.04 moles of NaOH, which is equal to the same number of moles as of the acid as well, which is HA, or that would be equal to 0 0.04 mole, which is the same of the conjugate base. See how that works? Now, since I ask for the acid, so this is your acid right here. So to find the concentration of the sample, it's pretty easy. Molarity is equal to number of moles divided by what? Liter of solution, okay? So now the sample is right here. So this is your liter of solution. So all I can do is take this divided by 0.1 liter. And this will give us the initial concentration of the acid initially, which turned out to be 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.1. That give us 0.4 molarity. And that is the acid right there. Or if we rewrite this with the chemical formula of the acid, we have 0.4 MH2CO3. Now let's look at another part of the graph where we had to solve for pH4. Well, the half equivalent point, that's pretty easy, okay? We're not going to go over that one. What about at the buffer region? What happened when we add in some base and that's going to affect or pH, right? If we add in base, it's going to go up. The pH is going to go up. Let's see how we're going to solve this problem. So in this case, we're adding 10 milliliter, okay? So let's see what happened to the pH when we add in a small amount of the strong base before it even reached a half equivalent or even the equivalent point. Well, first of all, we need to write the equation again. And if you notice, this right here can be written as OH minus, okay? And do we care about the water? No. So in this case, all we have to do is solve for this two things about this conjugate pair. So initially, what do we have? Everything again has to be in terms of moles, always, when we talk about changes in a reaction. Well, we know that this, what is the volume of this? That is 100 milliliter, right? So this is 100 milliliter sample. So we convert that to liter, 0.1 liter. Time the molarity of this. And do we know the concentration of the solution at the beginning? Yes, we solved that recently right here, 0.4. So what we have here is 0.4 molarity. And if we multiply that, this gives us 0 0.04 mole of that acid right there. Okay, so you keep that in mind. And now we're adding, how much do we add of the strong base? This strong base will completely neutralize and dissociate. It's going to react with this acid right there, even though it's a weak acid. So we have 10 milliliter. That would be 0 0.01 times the molarity of the base, which is 1.0. And this gives us the most 0 0.01 mole. Okay, and of course, initially we have nothing here and nothing here. We don't care about the water. We care about this two right here. We get this two are in the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. So this is your initial mole. Now let's see the changes in mole. And of course, you know the value of OH is smaller. It's going to completely use up and neutralize with the weak acid right here. So we have minus 0 0.01. And over here, we have minus 0 0.01. But when these two things react together, it's going to make the product. So we have plus 0 0.01 for the conjugate base of that acid right there. Now at equilibrium, what do we have? And of course, for the base, we have 0. And for the acid, we have 0 0.04 minus 0 0.01. That gives us 0 0.03 moles left. Okay. And for the conjugate base, we just have 0 plus 0 0.01 and give us 0 0.01. And there you go. We have our conjugate base and its acid right there. So if you notice, we can convert this into molarity very easily by dividing by the new volume. So what is the new total volume? In this case, it is 100 from the sample milliliter plus 10 milliliter from the base. Give us 110 milliliter, okay? But if you notice, we convert that to liter, which is 0.11 liter. And we have 0.1 one liter, 0 0.11 liter. And plug this into the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. We have pH. And I substitute it in. 
And notice how when I cup this in, I didn't simplify this to get the molarity as a single number because I want you to see that because they share the same volumes, what we can do is we can now cancel each other out. And that gives us what? Just log of 0 0.01 over 0 0.03. And our pH is B.3. Which makes sense because if you notice right here, right? That buffer region is still in a very acidic zone. Now, before we tackle on solving the pH at the equivalent point, which is the hardest part of titration, let's look at something easier. Let's look up, up here. How do you find the pH after the equivalent point? And we know that after the equivalent point, it's just basically determined by the excess OH minus because it's coming from the base that's being added, right? All the acid has been neutralized. So let's see how this is going to work. I know at this point right here is 40 milliliters, so I'm trying to add 60 milliliters. What happened to the pH at 60 milliliter of the base has been added? Okay, so let's solve this problem. And of course, always write our reaction again. So in this case, again, we have to use the initial concentration of the sample and the volume. And of course, we start with 100 milliliter of the sample of the acid again, which turned out to be 0.1 liter time the molarity and we figure that out to be 0.4 and this gives us again 0.04 moles okay the same thing as we did over here but for the base we now use 60 milliliter that is 0 0.06 liter so we have 0 0.06 so we have 0 0.06 liter time the molarity of the base which is one and that give us 0 0.06 mole. Right away you know that this is a lot more than that, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to subtract the lower one because that's the one that used up first. So this one is used up first. It's being neutralized. So we have your initial. Now let's look at our changes. So of course we're going to minus 0 0.04 minus 0 0.04. And then of course we're going to add 0 0.04. But before we continue, we have to visualize what's happening here. We have a weak acid that has been completely neutralized to make its conjugate base. But what we care most right here is that the OH has a bunch of them left over at the equilibrium. So of course we're here zero right there, right? But here we have 0 0.02. This is from the excess amount base. And you have to realize that for the titration of a weak acid with a strong base, this right here determine the pH. We don't care about the rest anymore. Okay, this right here, the excess determine the base. So excess of OH minus will give us your pOH. Okay, but this is in terms of mole, so we have to convert it to molarity first by dividing by the new volume. And what is the new volume in this case? It's going to be 100 milliliter from the sample, the 60 milliliter from the base. So which is 0.16 liter. And to change the moles of the excess OH minus to its molarity, we divide by the new volume, which is 0.16 liter. And this gives us what? 0.125 molarity of OH minus. And if we have OH minus, we can solve for pOH right away, which is negative log of the concentration. In this case, negative log of 0.125. And this gives us what? 0 0.903, which makes sense if we convert this to pH. And pH is equal to 14 minus that, 0 0.903. Give us 13.097. This is really basic, and that makes sense. And notice how we make this assumption where the excess base determine the pH. It has made a problem a lot easier to solve, okay? Now let's tackle the most challenging part of all, is that assume that the pH at the equivalent point is not given. Solve for it. How do we solve for it, okay? That's the hardest part. And of course, the first thing we have to do is rewrite our reaction. 
And now if we look at our reaction, we know that this two right here, they are equal to each other, right? So this two has been neutralized to make the salt and the water. And if the water, we notice it doesn't affect pH. So it doesn't affect the pH, so we don't really care about it anymore. We could just cross it out. So this does not affect pH. Now what's left, because this has been used up already, what's left is determined by this. So before we can actually solve for this problem, we have to realize that this right here can be written as OH minus, okay? Now if we have OH minus, guess what we have to do? We have to rewrite this reaction. Remember, this is a reversible reaction. We have to rewrite it in a way that we can solve for this here. We need to solve for this. Because this is OH minus, we can solve for POH. But in order to solve for this concentration, we have to look at our KB, which gives us our base, right? And we are only given in KA right here. So how do we find the relationship? So let's rewrite this so that we have our OH minus as a product. And again, we don't care about water, okay? So now, let's look at this carefully. This right here is our OH minus, right? But we are only given the Ka. We assume that the pH is not given to us. We are given Ka. Well, OH, to solve for the concentration of OH, we need Kb, not Ka. To solve for the concentration of OH minus, we need Kb. Kw is equal to Kb times Ka. And we are given our Ka right there, 1.7 times 10 to negative 4. So let's plug this in. So we can have Kb is equal to Kw divided by Ka. And Kw, look at the back side of your periodic table, is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And our Ka is given to us, which is 1.7 times 10 to negative 4. And this gives our Kb equal to 5.8 times 10 to the negative 11. And this gives our Kb to be 1.88 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, now let's use our Kb to solve for this, okay? Pretty easy. So Kb is equal to, again, the product multiplied each other, which is H2CO3 divided by the reactant, which in this case, we don't care about the water. And again, you will realize that the pH is pretty much determined by the conjugate base that's being produced, right? Because what we have here is 5.88 times 10 to the negative 11. This two right here, they are equal to each other. So they can be represented as in terms of x and x. So what we can have here is x times x give us x squared and the values of this concentration here. But what is it in the first place? This, again, is your conjugate base. And remember I told you right here? that the number of moles of base is equal to the number of moles of acid, but also equal to the number of moles of a conjugate base. So if we have mole, what can we find in terms of molarity? Well, we can divide it by 0 0.04, divide by the total volume, reaching that equilibrium point. What is it in this case? So at that particular volume, we have 100 plus 40 milliliter, okay? And that's what, 0.14 liter. And give us our molarity, which is 0.286 molarity of the conjugate pair, which is, in this case, HCO3 minus. And again, this is the conjugate base of it. So let's plug this concentration in. We have 0.286 ice table. And that is equal to your Kb, which is 5.88 times 10 to the negative 11. Before we solve this, let's look at internal ice table. So let's rewrite this reaction. And notice how I didn't use the ice table to explain this part, right? Because it's actually become more complicated than it is. So let's get rid of the ice table and just solve this. And why is it easy to ignore the ice table? Because we know that this two thing are equal to each other, so we can solve it in terms of x. Because we don't really know what the concentration at the half equivalent point gonna be. But we know in terms of moles, okay? So in this case, what we're gonna have here is just x. And why didn't I use the ice table to explain this? Well, we have to realize that at the equivalent point, this right here is what determine or what's gonna affect the Kb, because it's gonna multiply to each other, right? 
this concentration OH and the asteroid that is already been neutralized already. They already equal each other. So we can now represent in terms of x. So what we're going to have here is x equal to the square root of 5.88 times 10 to the negative 11 time 0.286. And our concentration of OH is 4.10 times 10 to the negative 6 which give our POH equal to 5.39. So our pH is equal to what? At the equivalent point, 14 minus 5.39 equal to 8.61, which is very close to 8.66, okay? So that's how we know. So that's how we solve for the pH at the half equivalent point. So keep in mind, Try to ignore the ice table and just use your logic, substitute in the x to solve for it. Uh, and then from there, you can just calculate for the POH. And notice how when we have the titration of the base, this right here would be your buffer zone. So that's your buffer region. And this right here would be your equivalent point. And of course, after equivalent point, this will be your excess. Well, this case, excess of what? It's going to be your excess of H plus or your acid, okay? Now, how is this part going to be different comparing to the acid that we just saw? Well, we know that we have a base reacting with an acid right here, okay, which is H3O plus. But we're not going to write H3O plus. Let's write as H plus, okay, to make our life a lot more easier. And that H plus is going to react, and we have a conjugate acid right here, HB plus. And, of course, in the process, we are going to make water. And of course, we don't care about water because there's an effect of pH. So of course, in this case, the pH will be determined by this because this two right here has been completely neutralized each other. So let's rewrite this and solve for this. And of course, this reaction is reversible because we need to solve for the H plus to solve the pH. We have to rewrite this reaction. We have HB plus. Now, we're not going to use KB because this is an acid. So we need what? We need your KA, okay? So Ka equal to and notice how I ignore the water. Okay? And the same thing like we did before, we are gonna represent this in terms of x and x. Okay? So we have x squared over Hb plus, and you have your Kb. And then you can solve for the rest. And that's how you solve for the base titration.